A new car would give everyone their own personal chauffeur, at least a robotic one that is. Google has been testing cars that drive themselves. The company's fully automated prototypes have already logged 140,000 miles in California. Google says there was always someone behind the wheel during the test, just in case of an emergency. Thankfully, Lou Ann Hammond is CEO of DrivingTheNation.com. Boy, all of us were talking about this this morning because it's so fascinating. I think of, you know, the Jetsons, and it, this seemed impossible when I was a little kid. But take us through the technology. How would this work? Well, imagine this, Chris. You're on the highway, you're driving, and you look over, and the person next to you, there is no person. And there are three other people in the car. They're texting, they're talking, they're on their phone. It's completely safe because what's happened is Google and DARPA, DARPA is known for creating the, the Internet. They, they are, uh, both of them have been working on this for a, about six years now. And one is working on it for the military. The other is working on it for citizens so that there are less accidents and less fatalities and it works with technology technology with GPS with sensors you you may even have adaptive cruise control already in your car something that slows down when as a buffer when you get too close to another car so all of this is now taking place Google and DARPA have been working on it but more importantly the people behind it from uh, Stanford and uh, from Carnegie Mellon those are the people that are the smartest. And when you and I were working on splitting open frogs and maybe doing volcanoes with baking soda, these guys were actually looking at the gravitational pull of ball bearings to the earth. Well, so they're the, the <laughs> smartest of the smart. Yeah, I definitely was not doing that. Uh, it's fascinating to me, and, and it does make sense, because one of the things they say is that, for example, let's say somebody slams on the brakes ahead of you, their sensors can react more quickly than a human can respond. So I get that. But what I also worry about is if there's just some little malfunction and I'm reading my Kindle and not paying attention, it does seem like even a basic malfunction could be dangerous, if not fatal. What do they say about that? Well, it's, just, it's the thing that all automobile manufacturers worry about is if there is a malfunction of any type. And we've seen malfunctions in cars, and certainly there have been recalls because of it. But there, but. This would not go on the road until some, until it was completely ready. One of the places that DARPA was looking at it, the government unit was looking for, was going into theater, into combat with these type of cars. Because if you don't have a driver and you're going into combat and you're, that, that car is able to take food or water or fuel into combat with them, that's one less life that's at, at risk. And two, and a third of all of the people that go in there either are working because they need f food, fuel, or water in that area. So that's where you really can see a benefit. As we progress from having it in the military, out in, in the uh, rural mountain areas, perhaps we can bring it closer into the urban areas where there are more people, more congestion, and, and we really do have to worry about the finesse of this car. Is there sort of a best case scenario timeline when we might start seeing these out on the roads? There has been no timeline specified. There are already these vehicles in combat in theater with these groups. And you think of, of uh, some of these vehicles that can go out before any of your uh, military men go out in, when they're in combat, and you put it out and you put it out there first. And if there's an IED, an explosive, in in line where they're going to go, it's going to hit that car first, and not any of our guys that we have to worry about being safe. All right, Lou Ann Hammond, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much.